info record or purchasing info record now what is this info record or purchasing info record whenever we try to create a purchase order for a particular material and the vendor we have two ways to maintain the net price and the conditions one is manually you can enter the net price and the conditions and another one is you'll get the price and the conditions automatically in the purchase order One is manually you need to enter the net price and the conditions. Another is automatically you will get the net price and the conditions in the purchase order. Provided if you maintain info record. So info record, what is an info record? Is a master data that contains central source of information of a certain material and the vendor relating to the purchasing data under a particular plant with a specific purchasing organization is called an info record it mainly determines the price and the conditions from the info record when we create a purchase order the system automatically displays the net price and the conditions to the vendor when we create a purchase order for a particular metal and the vendor the system automatically displays the net price and the conditions from the info record and the info record is maintained in four different category types standard info record subcontracting info record consignment info record and pipeline info record Okay, we'll see now. So we'll have the configuration settings. So this configuration settings, I will show how to create the number ranges, how to define the number ranges for the info record. But whatever the settings are there for SAP standard, let it be like that only. But in the real time, we'll define these number ranges. Now see here. Coming to the configuration settings, SPRO, SAP reference IMG, Materials management, purchasing, purchasing info record, define number ranges. Define number ranges. Click on groups. <laughs> so these are the SAP given standard settings. Purchasing info record for stock material IL the indicator and purchasing info record for non-stock material IM. So these are the standard settings. Therefore don't disturb the standard settings while you are practicing during the training program also but in the real time we'll create the number ranges i will show it how to define it the reason is in our training version if you create the number ranges what happens in the near future when you try to create a purchase order the purchase order will be created but we are unable to create a gr for that purchase orders so that the reason don't disturb the standard settings of the number ranges belongs to the info record whatever the standard settings are there here let it be as it is in, even in the servers where you are practicing it 
I will show it how to define the number ranges in real time. So in the menu bar, go to menu bar, group insert. In the menu bar, group insert. So you'll get a screen. So here text. So number ranges for info record. for stock items so I'll go from number and to number so from 1 to whatever the number you want to define press enter save so here you are able to see number ranges for info record for stock items now Double click on the indicator IL. Double click on the indicator IL. So it will change this into blue color. Then select the group what you have created and click on element group. So the indicator automatically assigned to the group. So like this will define the number ranges. Similar for non-stock items in the menu bar, group insert. Number ranges for info record for non-stock items. So from number to number. press enter so the group has been created so double click on the indicator IN select the group and click on element group so like this we define the number ranges but I am not creating it what are the settings are there let it be like that only okay yeah now to create or to maintain info record the transaction code is ME11, ME12, ME13 that is create, change and display <laughs> go to the transaction code ME11 enter the vendor so here enter your created vendor material purchasing organization plant in the info category you activate standard as of now we are going to see only the type of info record is standard in the near future we will see the subcontracting the pipeline and consignment but as of now standard info record. press center the next subheading you will get general data The next subheading you will get general data. So here you have first reminder, second reminder and third reminder. So the reminders are maintained in two ways. suppose if you maintain purchasing value key for the material in the purchasing view in the material master then this reminders will get automatically so when you are created a material master at that time we have entered the purchasing value key see I will open the screen I'll 
So what is the metal here? 6051, right? I'll go to that metal master, I'll show. MM02. Enter that material. In the select use, purchasing view. Enter the plant. So here, I maintain the purchasing value key as 4. So for this 4, you have the reminders, 10, 20, 30, like that. So that the reason, it is displaying automatically in the info record. So the reminders are displayed automatically in the info record, provided if you maintain purchasing value key in the purchasing view in the material master. If you don't maintain purchasing value key, then we are supposed to enter manually in the info record. So two ways. If you maintain there in the metal master, you will get automatically. If you don't maintain in the metal master, we need to enter them manually. Next, click on text. Click on text. Info memory. So any text information can be maintained. And this is optional. You may or may not. So this text information is optional. You may or may not. And purchase order text. If you maintain text information, automatically it will be copied into the purchase order. Automatically it will be copied into the purchase order. Now, there is option called conditions. Now I am going to click on these conditions. The moment when I click on these conditions, see guys all of you, system will take to the next screen where it displays, see here, PB00 gross price. For example, I will enter 100. So what is this PB00? PB00 is called a condition type identified as a gross price given by standard SAP. That C and TY means condition type we call this. Next I will enter another condition type given by SAP only RA01. I will enter 5. Press enter. That is 5%. That is the meaning of it. It's not 5000. ZA01, I will enter 10, enter, surcharge, I will enter another condition type, FRA1, 3, enter. These are all the standard condition types given by SAP. PB00 identified as a gross price, RA01 identified as a discount, ZA01 identified as a surcharge, FRA1 identified as a freight. So these are all the SAP given standard condition types. And these are the values we are supposed to enter. These are sample values guys I am entering. Even we can configure and we can create our own condition types. We have a separate chapter. There we will discuss. This is so early. But as of now, we are going to follow the SAP given standard condition types. How this calculated? These conditions. So this is a calculation part of the condition types. So gross price we have taken it as a hundred and discount is five percent of the gross price. It will become 95. Surcharge is ten percent of the gross price. Ten. Therefore net is equal to discount plus surcharge. 105, then freight 3% of the gross price and effective is calculated as net price freight. So 105 plus 3, 108. It means when we create a purchase order for this material and the vendor, the system automatically takes the net price and the conditions from the info record. 
so this is the calculation part whatever the conditions you have maintained over here now I am going to save the document save the system automatically takes to the next screen purchasing organization data the system automatically takes to the next screen purchasing organization data so here make sure that plan delivery time to be maintained if you maintain in the vendor master itself you will get automatically otherwise we need to enter here then purchasing group and below see guys here net price you got 105 and effective prices you got as a 108 so system automatically calculate the conditions and the values what we have maintained and here you have tax code just observe normally these tax codes are maintained in the invoice when you are creating invoice creation but we have other types of info records just now we have seen subcontracting info record consignment info record pipeline info record for these types of info records we supposed to enter the tax code so when we are discussing those business scenarios we are going to maintain this tax code but for the standard no need to maintain the tax code at all because we are going to create a, a regular and normal invoice therefore save the document so the system will throw a message info record so and so created and this is a number range because of the number ranges only you will get this info record number now to see the behavior okay just I will show how to create a purchase order for this vendor 2201 and for this material 6051 how this info record concept will work enter the vendor and in the header level I will enter the purchasing organization purchasing group and company code enter the created material quantity just observe guys I am not entering the net price at all I am leaving it blank plan and store location the moment when I press enter see guys all of you what happened to the net price you got the net price as 105 and even you cannot be able to modify it it is totally grayed out it is just in display mode you cannot change modification everything apart from that in the purchase order if you go to item details conditions type it will display all the condition types including the values what you have maintained in the info record it automatically displays whatever the conditions you have maintained in the info record let us say for example I will change this supplier instead of 2201 vendor I will enter 2202 vendor press enter so what happened there is no conditions at all no gross price and even the item value also net price is blank but still you can create a purchase order by man maintaining manually the conditions and one more thing there is one condition type you have seen in the info record also and even the purchase order where it displays automatically you no need to enter it that is gross price this will be displayed automatically whether you are a quote, creating a quotation or a purchase order or an info record whatever it is gross price condition type will be displayed automatically only we are going to enter the remaining condition types suppose again if you maintain the same vendor 2201 vendor if you press enter again it displays the conditions are now and net price you got it because you have maintained the info record for this material and for this vendor so this is the concept of the info so if you maintain the info record 
automatically net present conditions will get it if you don't maintain it but still you are able to create a purchase order by entering them manually like how we have seen the list of materials the list of vendors in the same way to display list of materials sorry to display list of info records per material it is me1m and per vendor is me1l to display list of info records per material me1m and per vendor is me1l yeah So if you go to ME1M, enter the material, the purchasing organization plan, whatever it is, if you execute, it will display the info records. So if you go to ME1L, that is per vendor. If you just enter the vendor, so with this vendor, how many types of info records you have created, displays. So next heading is purchasing. So we have seen three master data: material master, vendor master, info record. Now we are going to see the transaction document. That is purchasing documents. The remaining master data we will see later on. That is source session quota arrangement. Now purchasing. The different types of purchasing documents available in SAP MM are purchase requisition. Purchase order, request for quotation, contract, schedule agreement. Okay. The different types of purchasing documents available in SAP MMR. Purchase requisition, purchase order, request for quotation, contract, and schedule document. So these are a total five purchasing documents what we have in our SAP MM. Out of which the first one is only internal document. The first one is only internal document. The remaining four are the external documents so remember out of five purchase request knows the internal document the remaining four are external documents now first we'll discuss purchase acquisition now what is this purchase equation means now for example I am working in one organization as a mechanical engineer or mechanical department in charge the worker will come, he will inform me, we need a material called gear of 5 to 10 pieces. Now, I am in need of one material called gear. Now, what I will do? I will directly, I will not approach to the vendor. Okay. So, here, I will inform to my purchasing department in the form of creating purchase requisition stating that boss I need this material of so and so quantity on so and so date in the form of a PR even we can call this as a indent So what is a purchase requisition? Is a purchasing document created by the requisitioner or by the user to the purchasing department 
during the purchasing of the materials and services from the vendor. It is the only one internal document in SAP MM. It is the only one internal document in SAP MM. The PR document is divided into four divisions. So the purchase requisition screen is total divided into four divisions. That is document over you. Document over you. Header. Item over you and item details. So it's totally divided into four documents. So the peer document is divided into into four divisions the screen itself document overview header item overview item details okay now to create a PR, the transaction code is ME51N, 52N, 53N. What does it mean? 51N is to create, 2N is to change, 3N is display. So I'll go to ME51N. Now this is a PR skin, guys, how it looks like. All of us here. If you click on each and every option, it will spread the screen. Now see here. If you click on document overview, it will display document over screen. Header, item overview, then item details. If you want to collapse the screen, the same options. Click on it, click on it. To expand the screen, the same options. Click on document overview, click on header, click on item overview. When you enter item overview, then you'll get item details. If you want to compress or collapse, again the same options. Okay. So here the first one is now and one more thing. The moment you came to this screen, you need to identify it is displaying some purchase requisition standard that is called document type in future we'll discuss what is this document type so whatever the purchasing documents we create that is created based upon the document type and here the document type that is standard one is purchase requisition standard by default it will be there guys you no need to select the option also again i will enter the transition code see all of you guys me51n the moment when you press enter so it will be there you no need to select or you no need to enter the document type. Click on document overview. Then it will display the document overview screen. And here there is option called selection variant. Click on that selection variant. Under this I will select purchase requisitions. System displays under the screen. And here so I will not enter my organization structure on details because so far you are not create any purchase equations or anything so even I will not enter my plant also I will enter the SAP given standard plant 1000 execute click on this clock now see what happens so here the system has displayed the list of purchase requisitions created so far under the comp sorry under the plant 1000 
the system displays the list of purchase requisitions so far created with respect to the plant okay so what is the meaning of this document overview so in the document overview the system displays the list of purchasing documents it may be PR or a PO or RFQ or what it may be depending upon the requirement let's say you go to again selection variant and you select purchase requisitions you try to maintain your plan 2011 see whether the system displays any purchase requisitions or not if you execute the system will throw a message no data satisfying selection criteria exists it means by using that plant we don't have created not even a single PR close it next header in the header any text information is maintained in the header level which will be copied automatically into the purchase order in the header any text information is maintained in the header level which will be copied automatically into the purchase order next item overview so I'll close the header in item overview the first option you have item there is nothing but item number that is serial number so whenever if you enter two or three or four or five materials it will display serial number like one two three four five six etc so here SAP has started the serial number as 10 20 30 40 50 like that next A A stands for account assignment category so the account assignment category parameter is used when we create a purchase requisition for services then when we create a purchase requisition for non-stock items at that time we supposed to maintain this account assignment category and that too for our MM we are going to use K K refers to cost center so what is the main function of account assignment categories the main function of account assignment categories to determine which account assignment data is required for the order item next I I stands for item category so here we have different types of business scenarios therefore we will create different types of purchase requisitions and purchase record types by selecting here so here you have different item categories like standard, consignment, subcontracting, third party, stock transfer, service, etc. So as of now, we are going to see only the standard one. So the main function of item category is to determine how the procurement of the metrics and goods is controlled for the order item. So what type of PR we are creating now? It is a standard PR. And here you enter the created material number if you know it directly you enter the material number or otherwise you can search now I have entered the material code therefore no need to enter the short text it will take from the material master enter the quantity no need to enter the basic unit measure it will take from the material master deliver a date so whichever the date you want the material No need to enter the metal group. Enter your created plan. Created show location. Created purchasing group. So here requisitioner. It means the person who is going to create the username. Tracking number in future if you want to track the PR so tracking number is minimum is one digit maximum is ten digits and enter the purchasing organization press enter so here you got the serial number as 10 
So this is the item more you details we will enter. Next item details. In item details you have material data. So here it displays again your material code, the description what you maintain and the material group. If this material is maintained in the form of batches, even you can enter the batch number also. Otherwise, it's not required. Next, quantities dates. So it displays how much quantity you are ordering it. It displays the delivery date, requested, release date, everything. Here there is an option called closed. Suppose if we activate this indicator, then what happens? The purchase request will be closed and we cannot create a PO with reference to this PR. Next valuation. So here it displaying 1 kg is equal to 10 euros. From where you got this valuation price? Because I have maintained the price in the material master. Therefore, the system is taking the price automatically from there. And here there is an important parameter invoice received. By default, it will be in activated position. Suppose if I deactivate, then what happens? Then the material is treated as a free goods material. Free goods material means you will create a purchase order and you create a goods receipt, but there will be no invoice as a vendor is setting for free of cost, provided if you deactivate this indicator. Next to source of supply, it means from which source you are purchasing it. So here you have desired vendor. What is meaning of desired vendor? That is recommended vendor. You can recommend the vendor to purchase a material if you know it. Next to fixed vendor. So we have separate scenario called fixed vendor. So sometimes you can fix the vendor to purchase a material. Okay. Next to status. So here the system displays the status of the purchase requisition. What, what the system will display status of purchase requisition means whether for this purchase requisition is a purchase order is created or not. If it is created, it will display the PO number. If it is not created, it will not display the PO number. And here you have block ID. You can block the purchase requisition by selecting block by requester. So if you block the PR, the PO is created but hold for GR. The PO is created but hold for GR. Next contacts, contact person. Contact person. So here it displays again the requisitioner and all and here creation indicator whether the PR is creating manually or automatically. And here there is an indicator called MRP controller. Suppose if the MRP controller indicator is maintained, so blindly believe the source of the purchase request is getting from production planning department or production planning module. If this MRP control indicator is maintained, then the source of the purchase request is from production planning department, PP. So this text is item text. So enter the text information. Enter the text information and here you have delivery address. Always the system displays the plant address will be taken as a delivery address. So when you are creating the plant, there we have entered the address. So the system automatically take the address from that plant creation. During the plant creation, whatever the address you have maintained, that address will be displayed over here. So this is the total details of your purchase requisition. Before going to save, there is a check button here. Click on the check button. So system displays a message, no message issued during check. Let us say I will remove the quantity. We'll see what happens. Again click on check, system throws an error. Purchase requisition still contains errors. Item 10, enter a quantity. Item 10 means that is the first line item. There you enter the quantity. Again click on check. Save. Now the system will throw a message saying that purchase requisition so and so. 001, 001, 51, 54 created. 
from where you'll get this number you'll get because of the number ranges only when you define the number ranges then only displays a purchase equation number so how to define the number ranges for purchasing documents that we'll see later on so like this we create a purchase equation so we can create a pr with reference to pr so how can you copy the data from old pr to new pr so create a pr with reference to pr again you go to me 51 n click on document overview selection variant purchase equation so here just you enter the plan if you want to see based upon the material also you can enter the material also let us say I'll enter material and plan we'll see whether the PRs are created or not here the system is displaying there are only one purchase equation has been created for this plan therefore you place a cursor on the PR and click on adopt the moment when I click on this adopt automatically displays the details over here see you got you got first line item again if you click on adopt second if you click on adopt third if you click on adopt fourth if you click on adopt see ya. so like this what are the modifications and changes you want to do it you can do then say but your equation is right so to display list of purchase equation the transaction code is ME5A to display list of purchase requisitions the next topic we call it is a RFQ request for quotation